Welcome, everyone. The BC government's new education legislation, Bill 11, is complex and will take time to properly analyze. However, of immediate concern today is the Minister of Education's new powers to override democratically elected school boards so he can implement the government's ongoing underfunding agenda. Section 32 in Bill 11 will allow the Minister of Education to issue directives to school boards and replace those democratic elected bodies with appointees if they don't comply. This is absolutely about the government's underfunding and 2015 budget that is forcing $54 million more cuts to school districts in the next two years. And it's probably about the government's appointed auditor to the Vancouver School Board. The government is forcing school districts to make cuts even though trustees are telling him that there is no more to cut. I think we have about 26 school boards have written letters to the Minister of Education about the unnecessary cuts that they have to make and that they can't uh, afford to do it. For whatever reason, Minister Fassbender and Christy Clark refuse to believe the very people working on the ground with students every day. They think there is some mythical low-hanging fruit to cut. But you know what? Our schools, our students, and all of our programs that support them are not low-hanging fruit. How long before we see government-ordered directives to close schools, to cut important programs, to force layoffs, and more? On the parts of the legislation related to professional development, I first want to say that BC teachers are very proud of BC's professional development programs and initiatives. The BCTF has a very long and proud history of supporting and promoting professional development. It is one of our union's core pillars. We work with school districts all the time in collaborative approach to professional development. However, potential changes to professional development were unfortunately announced without any consultation. And that's not a great start for a government that says they want to work with teachers on this matter. And furthermore, Professional development needs to be properly funded and respect teachers' professional autonomy. There are over 41,000 public school teachers in British Columbia teaching dozens of different subjects. And a top-down government-mandated approach to professional development will not be successful. But on the other hand, uh, I was assured by government staff this morning that they will consult with us deeply on this issue. And if this consultation will take place over two years. But there was no need to have to have legislation to sit down with us and talk about professional development. And we will raise our issues. And what we will be raising for sure is the need for government to fund. Fund our schools, fund professional development, and fund in-service. Here at the BCTF, we fully support professional development. We dedicate a lot of our resources right now to our robust professional development network, including our 32 provincial specialist associations, teacher mentoring, inquiry projects, workshops, and conferences. I hope the Minister of Education recognizes the work we do, respects our professionalism, and is willing to fund any new initiatives his government comes up with. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I would hope not, because currently we take professional development very seriously. Um, we do have uh, five non-instructional days, actually six, but five of those are dedicated to prof professional development that our teachers are involved in. Uh, some of the days are developed locally. Some of them are developed provincially in consultation with, with the school districts as well. And one of those days, uh, plus, uh, is wholly dedicated to our uh, provincial specialist associations putting on world-renowned conferences and that usually happens I believe in about the third uh, week in October and our specialist associations put on other uh, conferences too so for us professional development is important and and for us it's about uh, you know teachers uh, being involved in professional development being involved in their own learning uh, to enhance what they do in the classroom and uh, you know we don't need anybody to be telling us that that we need to do this or that it needs to be mandated because we already do it Yes. The downside, uh, that the, uh, this has public confidence that uh, the parents will not want the teachers are doing very little professional 
You know, I, I think what this is here is uh, this is actually, we believe, a diversion from underfunding. The most critical piece right now in our education system is the need for more funding. And, and what we should have been getting is announcements that uh, uh, the government is not going to expect school districts to have to cut another $29 million. We should have been expecting today that the government would reinstate adult education programs for free in the K-12 system. We should have been hearing some really good news stories today because that's the issue. That's the issue that uh, school districts have been talking to the Minister of Education about and uh, we need the system properly funded. What's the specific yes. downside of the government's proposed approach to professional development? If they, if they proceed with this, uh, you know, what's the harm that you see to have in the of education? Well, the, the upside I'm going to, I'll start with the upside right now, is that I've been assured today, this morning, in fact, around uh, quarter to 11, that uh, we will be involved in a deep consultation uh, with taking over the next two years on this idea and that they actually want to build on the work that we do as the BCTF in the area of professional development. And so if the intention is for them to want to sit down and talk to us about Pro-D and build on our work and fund the work that we're doing and fund other projects that, that we may want to get involved in, put more money, continue the mentoring project we do, uh, putting in funding for the inquiry projects that we currently do and fund ourselves. You know, if that, that's the conversation that we welcome having. Uh, like professional development is dear to our hearts and we will continue that uh, work. We'll talk to government about it and I uh, hope uh, uh, they will actually fund it. It is not something that needs to be top-down directed. Like I say, I think that whole thing today is, is a diversion. You didn't need legislation to sit down with us to talk about professional development. And the downside? I, well, you know, I, I think what I did is I wanted to talk about the positive uh, piece about that. And, and through talking with them, you know, we'll talk to them about what the downsides are. Our teachers are committed to professional development right now. And, and we don't need a, a, a government to be, I guess they must be implying that we're not, and we are. And, you know, if you look at the stats right now in terms of... Uh, in terms of how highly trained our teachers are in British Columbia, in terms of the number of teachers that have master's degrees, the number of teachers that have diplomas or, or continuing their work to, uh, to get further uh, university credits beyond their Category 5 uh, certification, that, that's huge all over this province right now. So we're engaged in that work continuously. We'll continue to be engaged in that work. It's, it's something that we believe in, that we want to control, and that's the conversation we'll have. Well, what's the your uh, philosophical problem, though, with having uh, 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 detailed requirements for, for professional development? You know, I, again, I wish I'm going to turn the question back to funding because I think I've been talking about the importance of professional development for us. And, uh, but right now, the issue in terms of how much money does our, do our schools need? in the next coming year. And our school district shouldn't have to be sitting around right now looking at what programs they're going to be cutting, how many teachers are going to, and support staff they're going to have to be laying off. That's the critical piece right now. And that's what government needs to be dealing with. We need to address the issues of class size, uh, more specialist teachers in our schools to support one-on-one -on -one learning with our students. I think that's what we should be talking about. Jim, the, uh, the last Minister of Education who seemed to consult with the BC Teachers Federation was George Abbott, and we've seen Mr. Abbott, uh, after a lengthy period of consultation with First Nations, appointed the Commissioner uh, for Treaty Commission, then fired. Do you have any faith in the consultation that you're going to be engaged in as opposed to the ones that First Nations and others were that led to Mr. Abbott's disappearance? Well, <laughs> you know, I... We just went through a tough round of bargaining, and, and through that round of bargaining, I was always uh, hopeful and thinking positive, and uh, uh, I have to keep uh, being uh, positive and, and hopeful. And, uh, you know, we know the, the, the record of this government in terms of uh, consultation, and, uh, um, and we have to be wary of that, and we don't go into anything without... Uh, we go into everything uh, with government with our eyes wide open, but... Uh, uh, if we can, uh, it's important for us to be involved in, in setting future directions and education policy. 
So, you know, we can hope and uh, that, it, that there will be a positive outcome and they actually listen to us. And it's unfortunate what happened to, um, uh, to George Abbott because actually I had, had the conversation with him in the airport just days before that. And he was very uh, excited about the, doing that work. And, uh, and then he gets a pink slip before he even gets to start. The, the, the money that they have to cut to $29 million, I mean, is that what you're referring to, that uh, the school the districts school have district to cut? Culture, school districts at $354 million in costs in the next two years. Well, that, I mean, that's the, the caveat the government is putting on it. But we know that uh, uh, within those costs, uh, we know that it's going to affect school uh, classrooms. That uh, what they're going to be looking at is programs, um, teachers, support staff, and how they're going to come up with having to cut that. I know they say that it's in min costs, but I think there's a lot of other costs related to and the resources to the classroom that come out of that. What are your options that the, you talk about the government uh, being challenging to deal with? What are your options if the government ignores you or proceeds with this or just uh, takes your uh, suggestions and files in the way and then just does what they want? Obviously, it leads to a major disruption. Not long ago, but do you have any response or tactics or options? You know, we've, we, we've been having really good uh, discussions right now with ministry staff on the uh, uh, curriculum revision changes that are happening. And of course, uh, you know, and our members are wholly involved in, in those discussions and rede redesigning the curriculum and some good things happening out there. But of course, uh, we always are, are, are talking, our members are, are, are making the comments to ministry staff as well as to government that those any kind of new initiatives that they want happening have to be supported with funding and and you know and that will be critical piece uh, in terms of uh, whatever discussions we have with government in uh, in other areas uh, you know some of them I hope will be successful the discussions we had with government regarding un the underfunding have not been successful unfortunately so far and when we look at the whole issue on, on professional development, uh, we'll wait and see what comes out of that. And now, if that's a two-year process, many things can change in the, in the next two years as we go forward. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you got to hope that or, or you got to believe that uh, in, such, in the area of professional development that if there's going to be real consultation happening that, that something comes out of it. Well, like I say, if this is a two-year process, that will be way down the road, and um, you know we'll be looking at uh, options down the road. But you got to think about this in a positive way. We know professional development is important, and we also know that it should not be uh, mandated uh, from top down. Two years down the road is the provincial election. Is that be an opportunity to uh, express your pleasure when it comes to that? Well, you know we uh, we always. Uh, exercise our democratic rights in, in any election and encourage our members to be involved in uh, in every election to make a difference for our students and for public education. I'm sure we'll be involved in the upcoming federal election and absolutely in the provincial elec election and uh, you know public education will be on the top of our agenda public services and that's what we'll be advocating for and uh, that's what you'll hear our voice in. Well, again, that's an issue down the road, and we're going to be clear in terms of what our position is. And, uh, you know, let, let's, if government's interested in professional development, and let's also talk about in service. And we know that there's been no funding available for the most part for school districts to uh, release teachers uh, during their working day to be in service on, on any kind of. Um, change that's happening. So that's a conversation that we need to, to happen in conjunction with uh, anything on professional development. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think it would be a, a really good idea to be talking about penalties when we haven't even sat down and, and talked about it. And, you know, we believe in professional development. We'll continue doing our own work, and that's the message we'll be sending to, uh, to government. Do you think this is going to save money? Is it going to benefit uh, uh, students, or is it just going to create a new uh, in terms of which piece? The uh, legislation for the Pro-D days. Uh, you know. uh, 
Well, potentially, uh, you know, legislation on professional development or continuing professional development, of course, will develop a huge bureaucracy, which will cost more money. I'm sure it will be a boon to private industry. And that's not what professional development is about for us. All right. Thank you.